thanks for stopping in, folks. God, do I appreciate your time. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Wednesday. It's May 17th, which means tomorrow my video will be live, and it'll be there at 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time to about 5, me and Lily Starr, who is going to be back this week, talk to our viewers live about stocks they're interested in. Bring us your ticker. Me and Lily will go over the charts, the news. Now, honestly, it's my hope that you're doing due diligence by looking at charts and you found a chart that's hot and it's ready to break out and you just want to identify that catalyst. Ooh, that's my kind of research. But truly, honestly, we'll look at whatever penny stock you want us to look at. Just be there at 4 o'clock tomorrow, Eastern Standard Time, and we'll do it. Remember, first come, first served. I can only see so many in an hour. So what do we do on this show? Same thing, we look at hot OTC and penny stocks. I'm looking for stocks that have potential and I'm doing my search on charts. I bring up a scan and I just jump in there around 20% and start coming down, 19, 18, 17, and I'm looking at every single chart. I have no clue what company it is. Then I find a chart that's warm or hot and I go looking for that catalyst. And if I find something, that's a stock I'm interested in. Now, it doesn't have to be a hot, big catalyst to make a hot chart move. Even a small warm catalyst can do that. So even lingering news can get stocks moving if the volume is there. And that's why we're looking at Gaxi, ticker G-A-X-Y, Galaxy Next Generation. Her chart is in breakout mode, but it's the very early stages. But she hasn't had much opportunity in a very long time. The charts have been just coming downhill, but they're now planing out. Now, I would have normally gone by this chart, but the volume has been growing incredibly. And that's what you need for a breakout is volume. So we're going to take a look at Gaxi. Gaxi finished today at 0 0.0019 with almost 9% gains today. She is on the middle tier of the OTC. We call this the QB, also known as the better tier, better than the pink, because the pinks don't have to use the CPA. Up here, you got to have your financials audited. Another thing about the QB is they have a minimum bid price requirement. That means they've got a limit that they can't go under here. That is a penny. They're supposed to be a penny. We're down here at double zero one. There should only be one zero there. Now, I don't know what the deadline is from the OTC for this. I'm still trying to figure out where the NASDAQ is. Seems they move it whenever they want to. But in either case, they do have a minimum bid price requirement here, so you should be aware of that. And they've got both those green ticks I'm always talking to you about. So this is good. The transfer agent, a verified profile. If you're going to be in a stock for a long hold, make sure to see these. There's a lot of important information being verified by those green ticks. So what does Galaxy Next Generation do? Well, they primarily work with schools with their video and audio needs in all sorts of ways. We are a manufacturer and a distributor of interactive learning technologies and enhanced audio solutions. We develop both the hardware and the software that allows the presenter and the participant to engage in a fully collaborative instructional environment. We also develop award-winning classroom audio solutions and school PA and intercom products. Our products include our own private label interactive touchscreen panel, which is sold to renowned brands such as Google Chromebooks, Microsoft Surface tablets, Lenovo, Acer computers, Verizon Wi-Fi, and more. Our current distribution channel consists of 30 resellers across the United States who primarily sell our products within the commercial and educational market. The kindergarten through 12th grade education market is the largest customer base for the product comprising, comprising nearly 90% of all of our purchases. So that gives you a general idea of what the company does. Now, the company hasn't had any fresh filings or new news presses, so there's no hot catalyst sitting on the table, but she's got a lot of small lingering catalysts that I think could do just as good for us. So what was the relative volume on Gaxi today? Ah, she dropped from about 4 million to 2.8 million, which isn't necessarily bad, right? Because she did have almost a 9% gain today. Share structure for Gaxi is confusing, and I'll tell you why. If you come down here to dividends and splits and click splits, you'll see right there that it was March 8th. She had a huge reverse split, one in 200, which I am keenly aware of because I went through it. 
ouch. This is like my 38th reverse split in the last two years. And every time they do it, it just takes a big chunk of money away from you. And the only way you can get back into the game is to buy yourself back in. You gotta throw money into that deep pit so that you can climb out of it. Well, after this reverse split, my average cost per share was $2.56. And right now we're at double zero two. So that was like 126,000% away from the price. Well, I averaged down today and I got my price down to a penny. Would you believe that? I bought myself back into the game because she looks like she's climbing. I'm not going to just throw my money into a bottomless pit. I want to see it coming back, giving me money again. And now I'm only 500% away from the price. But I digress. The reason I brought this up was share structure. I wasn't sure this was the proper share structure. It looks a little bigger after a 1 in 200 verse split. So I ran over to Google, did a search, and I found that all the numbers there agreed. And they weren't these numbers. They were 69 million. I've got to presume that is what it is. After a 1 in 200 reverse split, you're going to have a small outstanding share count and a small float. And both numbers were 69 million something or other. So that's what I'm presuming. Take a look at those financials for the company. They're making money regularly. Uh, remember these three zeros? We've got to plug behind any of the numbers down here. We're going from 2.3 million in 2020 up to 3.9 million in June of 2022. Looking at her quarterlies, she's everywhere. Wow. She went from 1.2 million down to 84,000. Bounced up over a half a million and now she's under a half a million. She's not making a lot of money, but the money is there. But you're going to see in the news, they do have more money coming in. And it's a lot more than that. Taking a look at the disclosures, we've got one you need to know about. The NT10Q. What that says is we're not filing our financials on time. This gives them five more days to get that quarterly financial in. Now, if you look at the date, it was 5-12 that they put that filing in. Today's 5-17. So do they have to give the financial on the fifth day or after the fifth day. I'm not real sure. In either case, this is one of the soft catalysts in the basket. The rest come from the news. Now, I'm going all the way back to January up until the beginning of May here. We're going to headline most of it, but I do want to jump into two of them. So at the beginning of the year, we had one man, not a hedge fund, one man invested a million dollars into this company. Whew, somebody believes in it. And then also in January, the company said their sales and marketing team is now executing on a $5 million sales pipeline. I do want to share this one with you. They tell us the company is pleased to announce its sales pipeline has risen to $5 million. And all we're seeing over there is a half a million a quarter, right? It, this is the largest in the company's history. In addition to a strong sales pipeline, Galaxy is pleased to have product available and ready to ship towards the end of this month. This came out in January, helping them close out a $1.7 million backlogged purchase order. So we know they just got $1.7 million too. They got deals they've been making here recently. Uh, the company adds electric design to their growing roster of resellers. They partner with Sturgeon Electric to further expand in the Mountain State regions. They are also expanding into Louisiana and Virginia. They tell us here the company reports a half million dollars in revenue from the delivery and installation of a previous purchase order. There's another half a million bucks. And then this deal. This is a big deal, folks. Remember, they go through resellers. And the bigger the reseller is, the more business this company is going to get. Well, Galaxy Next Generation partners with AVI Systems, the largest global audiovisual services provider, and they will market and install the G2 product line globally. Galaxy Next Generations is pleased to announce it has signed a partnership agreement with AVI Systems, the largest global audiovisual services provider. With more than 3,500 projects completed annually, and over 900 employee owners. AVI Systems assists its partners with marketing and installation of key audio and visual products and technology. Having the largest global AVUC Systems Integrator as partner to help design, install, and promote the G2 solutions is extremely exciting.
Now this company, AVI, it is owned by their employees. Those 900 employees are also owners, so everyone who works at AVI has a stake in the client's success. I like that sort of business. It's kind of like being a waiter or waitress. You get tipped. That's where most of your wages come from. So you really are interested in taking care of the people at the table. So they've got a lot going on here. It just isn't happening right now, but the charts are warm. Not hot, but warm. But that tidal wave of volume that came in, that has got me grabbing my board. You wanna go surf with me? Come on. As we always do, we're gonna be doing our charting on my free trading platform. This is Thinkorswim. You get it just by signing up with TD Ameritrade. And that's free too. So this is Gaxi, ticker G-A-X-Y, Galaxy Next Generation. And as always, that's a six month, four hour view. We've got a high back here six months ago of 16 cents, and it looks like we hit a low just yesterday, maybe the day before of 0013. You can see this 200 is barreling down. Price is way far away from it. Even when it wants to stretch to it, it can't get close. Right now, it's getting into the region. It is leveling out. The price can jump onto it, not slide downhill and barrel back down to the floor. And look at our volume. This is what I'm talking about. You can see it is definitely growing, getting stronger, and congested right now, very thick. So she is now just starting to come out from underneath her nine, and she is underneath the 20. It's not a big deal, but it is. She's starting to move up, and the volume is there to help her. Our oscillators show just a wee bit of strength. Our PPO is on the wrong side. We want that blue line on top of the pink. But our MACD has had its crossover a couple of days ago, and it is pushing up. And our RSI is very cool right now. She's at about 45. Let's take a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. So 20 days ago, we were at a high of 0045. We hit that low two days ago, 0013, she bounced off that. She did actually bounce off it. She came up over a 20, up over a 50. She's over a 50 now, sitting on top of her nine. That is a long ways from the 200, but it may not be as far away as you think. Now that she's gotten on top of the 50, we could see some bigger bar activity. Our oscillators, our PPO looking much better. Had a crossover that is now pushing up along with the MACD. That is over the signal line now. Our RSI is pulling back just because of that one red bar right there. Five day, five minute. She's pretty much back where she was five days ago, right? Yeah, she was here at 002. She's virtually at 002 right now. This was a little steep to be jumping on. Literally, if you were to jump on it, you'd probably slide back down. So she hit her head and fell back down. Bounced off of this low bubble and she's gotten on top of every single SMA on her five minute chart. And she's struggling with the nine day... Motherfucker. As always, we're doing our charting on Thinkorswim, the free trading platform you get just by signing up with TD Ameritrade. So this is a six month, four hour view as we always start off with. And this is Gaxi, ticker G-A-X-Y, Galaxy Next Generation. As you can see, she's been barreling down for quite a while. She was at 16 cents six months ago and at 0013 two days ago. It is just now that the 200 is starting to level off, right? It is getting flat. And when does the volume start coming in? When there's opportunity available. There's no reason to try to jump to the 200 back here. You're just going to slip and fall. But the volume did start coming in all the way back then. And right now it is getting congested. And right now she is starting to make a move. She took a dip here. She fell underneath her nine and she's just now getting back to the 20. It doesn't look like much of a big deal until you look at all that volume. Her oscillators show things are about ready to get going. Here's our PPO. It is trying to push up right now. It needs to be up over that pink line like the MACD. You want the blue line on the top pushing up. That's what the MACD is doing and we got our green bars accumulating. Our RSI is pretty cool though. That's down there at 47. 20 day, one hour view. Huge drop going from 0045 down to that 0013. Look at all the volume on that cell. That was a lot. And she bounced off that low bubble right off of it. She went across all of her SMAs and she's up over a 50 day and she's got her one red bar on top of the nine day. Oscillators are getting better, 
PPOs, he had a crossover pushing up. MACD's over to signal line pushing up. RSI is falling a wee bit right now, but it's up at 57 at least. Checking out that five day, five minute. Well, over the last five days, she's really gone nowhere. She was got a high here of 002, and that's virtually where she's at right now, 0019. She is over top of all of her SMAs. All of them, she's sitting up there. Maybe she's wrestling a little bit with the nine day. Uh, she has had three bar pullback here, which has affected all of our oscillators a little bit, but she's on top of the 200. Been a long time since Gaxi's had opportunity. All of the 200s are finally close enough to get up on top. And that's when you get cocky. That's when you start pushing your weight around. And that's when I think this is going to start to run. Now they are bringing in money. You see the quarterlies were half a million maybe, fell all the way down to 84,000. Now they're talking about a half a million dollar payoff, a $1.2 million payoff. They're expanding into other states. So I see things coming and she is pretty cheap right now. I just averaged down, did you hear? <laughs> Gaxi, it's a stock you may want to consider, but hey, do some more DD as always. Our next stock comes from the NASDAQ. This is Q-Rate Retail, ticker Q-R-T-E-A. She's got a hot chart. She's broke through the 200, came back down, and she's bouncing off of a level 200-day SMA, looking strong. Now, she hasn't got what I'd call a hot or big catalyst, but she's got warm, lingering catalysts, which can definitely work on a hot chart. So, Q-Rate, she finished the day at $1.08 with over 20% gains today. Now, you're probably familiar with this company, believe it or not. Q-Rate Retail is a Fortune 500 company comprised of seven leading retail brands. QVC, HSN, Home Shopping Network, Zulily, Ballard Designs, Frontgate, Garnet Hill, and Grandin Road. Q-Rate Retail Group is the largest player in video commerce, which includes video-driven shopping across linear TV, e-commerce sites, digital streaming, and social platforms. The retailer reaches more than 200 million homes worldwide via 14 television channels, which are available on everything, cable, satellite, free over the air, digital, live stream, wherever. The retailer also reaches millions of customers via their own streaming experience, websites, mobile apps, and social pages. And they've even got some products in some stores as well. So the company you are quite familiar with, they've got a lot going on, they've got revenues coming in, and the charts are finally looking like there's an opportunity to break out. So what was the relative volume around the company today? She dropped two, <laughs> went from 6.3 million down to 4.5 million. Again though, is it necessarily bad? Look, she's up over 20% on less volume. Share structure for the company. We don't have any information over here on the float and I really don't look them up. So what we got is an outstanding share count of 380 million. Our float's gonna be less than that. Could be a pretty high float. Financials for Q-Rate, whoa, they're making money. <laughs> Remember, we got to put those three zeros behind any of these numbers. You can see why they yank them off. It would just be too tight in there. So we're looking at billions of dollars. At the end of December 2022, this company had $12 billion, which was a drop. That was a drop from the previous three years. Not huge, but it matters in this, in this business, right? Quarterly, doing any better? Uh, well, looks like they went back to average. They were at 2.9 million, 2.7, had a real good strong quarter here at 3.5 billion, and then 2.6 billion for these three months. Wow, imagine making 2.6 billion in three months. Ho, ho. What sort of disclosures do we have for QRA? All right, we've got a whole bunch here, and I've gone through all of these. Um, the 10K, you don't have to jump into that because you saw it fell. They do break it down if you want to see where they lost their money. Each of their brands lost a little bit and it all added up. I went through these 8Ks and there are two of them we need to look at because there is no news with this company. There is no news whatsoever, at least not brought here and I haven't gone out to Google searching. However, the news is in the filing so we can make use of that. So one of those 8Ks uh, came out May 16th for Q-Rate Retail. 
And you tell us here that on May 16th, pursuant to the Series B convertible preferred stock purchase agreement between Liberty Broadband and Q-Rate Retail, the company sold over 27 million shares of the Series B convertible preferred stock for an aggregate purchase price of $57 million. The company gets that money. It's their stock. They're selling the stock to them. They just sold $57 million worth. So now, relatively speaking, that's not a whole lot of money when they're doing $2.8 billion every three months, but that's probably how they do it. <laughs> so they got 57 million there. One of the other 8Ks isn't good news, but it is a stimulus. They got notice from the NASDAQ that their minimum bid price was under a dollar too long. And they've been given a deadline, October 30th. They got to get it up over a dollar for 10 consecutive days. It has to close over a dollar. Well, we've been over a dollar one day now. It was up over a dollar just the other day, but it has to be 10 consecutive days in a row. And she's doing it. She's fighting it right now and she's getting over her 200 so she could get the strength and the power to leave this neighborhood alone and just go on. So I'm thinking that QRTEA has a chance of running just because her chart is warm and this is a well-known company that is steadily making money even if they've had a little bit of dip. You wanna see the chart? Come on. God, I love sharing charts with you. I do. It is one of my favorite pleasures. No, I'm not kidding. I'm being serious. So we're looking at Q-Rate Retail. This is ticker QRTEA. And of course, that's a six-month, four-hour view. And of course, our high bubble was six months ago, $3.26. A lot of volatility riding around that 200. Huge fall at the beginning of March and a hard landing at 67 cents at the end of April. And she got up on top of her 50, but wasn't doing much until this catalyst came of her financials. Catalyst, it fell. I know it fell a little bit, but it doesn't look like the investors minded. Maybe they were expecting worse because she jumped off of her 50, clear up over top of the 200 without even slowing down, bars getting big. She did crest over it because it's just kind of steep. She's sliding downhill. She came back down, she's hit it, but now look, it's level, right? She's getting her footing. The 50-day SMA has crossed the 200. That's a golden cross. That's a power sign. It's a reversal on the wrestling match. The guy on the bottom getting on the top. And that's what we see here big bars. She's getting excited again. She's ready to take off. And that's what we see down here on our oscillators. We got a crossover on the PPO and the MACD, both pointing up. RSI is starting to climb. And we don't talk about this often enough, but you see that blue line going up and you see my ADX going down. Well, my ADX is trend continuation. It changes direction whenever the trend changes on the board. It's not about which direction it's pointed, just the same direction. Well, whenever you see the blue line going up and the red line going down on the ADX at the same time, guaranteed your price is rising. So right now that chart looks beautiful. That is a breakout chart waiting to happen. 20 day, one hour view. Whew, look at that volatility. She came down underneath that 50, hit that low bubble, got up on top of the 50, banging her head on that 200, and then that financial came out and she ripped. She went from a price of 70 cents to $1.20, came back down, and look, you can see where she's bounced. This is the 200 she's respecting. She's pushed herself off of that, gotten back on top of her 50, and even after market hours, she is still pushing up. Both our PPO and ADX are still spreading out. Guaranteed your price is climbing if those two are going apart from each other. Just had a crossover on the MACD and our RSI is getting stronger. It's up at 60 right now. Five day, five minute. Now that kind of looks sad, but you see she broke it. She was at 119, came under the 200, hit a low of 88 cents, took a whole day getting her senses back together. That was a big drop and then jumped took off today, getting up over top of that 200 and ripping, just like a rocket in the sky. She got away from her 50 day SMA, but she's come back to it. And where's that price? A dollar eight. Where does that put it on? the? That is right above. Oh, this is beautiful. She is right on top of her nine day above the 50 day SMA climbing after market. 
beautiful setup, folks. Our oscillators are a little weaker right now, but I like the way she looks. She is set up for a breakout, and it would be really nice if some kind of news came out from the company. That would help a lot. Even a tweet if they have a Twitter account. Hint, hint. <laughs> so QRTEA, it does have a warm chart. The news isn't as hot as we would like, but still, a warm catalyst can move a hot chart. We're going to round this out by looking at a pink on the OTC. This is ticker OCLN Origin Clear. This is a water as a service business, which is getting to be big. There is more and more companies entering this sector. Well, OCLN, she has a hot chart. It's ready to break out. It just needs a catalyst. It needs a temptation. Well, I found one. It was hidden, but I found it. And I think some others found it too because she bounced today. She finished at 0 0.013 with almost 36% gains. Now she is on the pink tier, like I said, she's current. She's got a transfer agent verified, but we don't have a verified profile. Not a deal breaker, but we would like to see it sooner rather than later. So what does this company do? Well, they help provide businesses the opportunity to take care of their own water, not have to depend on the city. They tell us here that America's infrastructure is broken and our government is spending nearly $100 billion to fix the nation's 150,000 plus water systems. But runaway inflation is defeating that effort. So local businesses are taking direct action to clean and recycle their own water. We're helping them cut the cord by developing outsourced pay per gallon programs and a dual digital currency to streamline investor payments and recruit participation in water projects. So they've got a very innovative business here. They are working with water as a service, helping people assure themselves that the water's coming into their business, their home is clean, it's healthy, it's trustworthy. And that's why they started selling water. You know, when I was a kid, we never ever considered selling water. Water was free, you had to pay for porn. Now porn is free, <laughs> you gotta pay for water. Seriously, but you know, pollution started coming around, chemicals, people wanted a surety, so they were willing to pay for that. So now just drinking water, buying it in a bottle, big business. Well, now they want that same surety for their business and their homes, and that's what they do. But they're also using a new innovative way to bring investors in through a digital currency situation. I'll share a little more about as we go along. So what was the relative volume around the company today? You gotta be kidding. I'm flabbergasted. I, I thought it would be more, which is really a good thing because she dropped from 942,000 down to 210,000. So only 210,000 shares moved today and it moved the price 35%. So when the volume comes in tomorrow, when more people find this, we should see a bigger jump. That's interesting. All three stocks we've looked at have had less volume than normal, but have all grown today. Very interesting. Share structure for this company is too big. <laughs> Outstanding share count, 1.2 billion. Uh, unrestricted, they say is, well, almost 600 million, over a half a billion, which is what I'm per presuming that the float is going to be. So I wouldn't guess there's a low float here. But if you're just getting into this stock to make a run and get out, don't worry about that big wave. Ride it and jump off of it with your gains. Financials for OCLN. Ooh, we had a nice last year. 2022 had a 250% increase over 2021 going from 4 million to over 10 million. Not bad at all. Quarterly, it was all over the place. 1 million, 3 million, 3, 2. But they're making money and it's coming in on a regular basis. There's nothing wrong with that. Disclosures for the company. Uh-oh, there we go. So we have an NT10Q, another one of those we're not filing our quarterly report on time. This one was filed on the 16th, so they've got five days. That means by the 21st, maybe the 22nd, they should have their filings out. That should be a catalyst, the filings. It should be, so it's a window. We know how far away that is, but there's no guarantee they're actually gonna be bringing out their financials on that day. So let's take a look at the news because that's where this jewel was found. 
Do you see any jewels lying there? Well, let me flag over some of this. Origin Clear Spotlights, World Water Day in New York. All right. Uh, adding and replacing Origin Clear contributes Modular Water Systems Division to its water on demand subsidiary. That actually is pretty good, juicy news, and it is where we're going to be going, but that's not it. Origin Clear's revenue increases 250%. We saw that, and then you had this piece of news, and this is where the gold was buried. Origin Clear presents acquisition roadmap for water on demand. Now, it doesn't sound too generic, but it doesn't jump out at you. Let me show you what's in here. There's a lot of information here, so I want to kind of roll this all up for you. The company just made an acquisition not too long ago for Modular Water Systems Division, and they got all the assets with this company too, which was five patents which have already been appraised to be worth at least 26 to 53 million. So they got that. They're taking that new acquisition and merging it into their subsidiary, Water On Demand. Well, they have plans to roll this out onto the NASDAQ. You can hear this or read about this in their presentation at this link, which I did. Then you come back here and you start reading some more. Well, they start opening up opportunities for people to invest in the company and make money on the profits, not just on the stock. And that is made to accredited investors. And accredited investors, interested in the water on demand investment opportunity may invest and they will be included in a share of the net profits from the water services accredited investors are just people who have enough money to play with honestly now they want to get this company up onto the nasdaq that is called a spin out they could do that themselves and that's what they said they were going to do but it's hard it's a lot of work it can take time there's a lot of filings you can make mistakes and it's expensive they found a better way and that's what they tell us here at the bottom of this news press on january 5th water on demand executed a letter of intent with fortune rise acquisition corporation this is a spac a special purpose acquisition they're doing a merger with this company we don't know the date we don't have any details on it but they're going to go up to the nasdaq through a merger this is easy the SPAC has already taken care of all the filings. They've got the ticker secured. All this company does is step into the house. They're renting it. They're buying it now. And the great thing here is that they don't have to invest any money. They're going to be given money, a chunk of money that they can use for their own interest to expand their businesses. And this isn't relayed anywhere else. There's the headline. Origin Clear presents acquisition roadmap for water on demand. But down here, they're telling us we're going on to the NASDAQ through a SPAC, which also means they're not going to have to do a reverse split. If they were doing this on their own, there is no way they could get up there without a reverse split. And you got to be at least $3. Well, we're just over a penny. So we'd be looking at a reverse split of one in 300 to get there. No reverse split needed to go through a SPAC. And they're going to get a bunch of money up there. So this is a win-win-win for everybody involved. The SPAC, the company, and the investors. And hardly anybody knows about it because it's hiding down here. Aren't you glad you watched today? <laughs> Let me share this, uh, uh, the chart with you. <laughs> he thinks me having just a little bit too much fun. <laughs> All right, this is ticker OCLN Origin Clear. And yes, that is a six month, four hour view. And yes, the high bubble was six months ago at about four and three quarter pennies. She fell from there all the way down to just a little over half a penny mid April. Now, there was lots of volume just up to that low bubble. It has kind of dwindled down, but we've got one good strong spike here. But we see a lot of determination and intention. Off of this low bubble, she basically beelined it to that 50. Once she hit the 50, she showed intention. Look at that rip, jumping from the 50 to and through the 200. This is what she wants to do, climb. Yeah, she fell back, but she got on the trail that she pointed out and trudged it. Once she got up on top of that 200, another spike, another point to where she wants to go. All of this 
Man, that's tooth and nail. She is scratching to stay up here. No, I'm not going down. And then a hero comes into the picture. Dun, da, da, dun, our 50-day SMA. That is coming right up into the price, about ready to cross the 200. That is a golden cross. One of the strongest signals on the chart. Everybody loves to see them. They watch them. They play them. So if we only got 250,000 shares today with 35% gains, what are we going to get tomorrow? Osculators are looking great. Look at that. We got an imminent crossover on the PPO and the MACD, and that's crossing the signal line as well. And our RSI is climbing fast. Whew. Feel the heat coming off of that chart. 20 day, one hour view. Low bubble. It's under the 200, but it's on top of the 50. And she beelined it up over that 200. Lots of excitement and energy up here. She did dribble back down to the 200, went under it like a rubber ball in the water just to resurface on the top. And not just here, she's way up here. She is sitting above all of her SMAs looking good. And look at our oscillators. There's another imminent crossover in the PPO, crossing the signal line and a very strong pushed up RSI. I'm loving this. Maybe I better back up. This is getting a little warm. Whew. Five day, five minute chart. All right. At initial look, it doesn't look great. She fell hard here from just a little over a penny to double zero eight. And it doesn't look like she's done much, but she has. She's put herself above every single SMA. <laughs> she's sitting there and all the charts and everything. All of our charts in the five minute are on fire right now. They're all pushing to the moon everything looks good we've got a little nugget of gold that was found under the pillow here they did not announce this they didn't bring out a headline are they going to do it tomorrow will they bring out a press release tomorrow i don't know but i think she's in a great position we saw a little volume do a lot so i've got hopes so what do you think ocln gonna run tomorrow i think there's a very good likelihood she could but then so could gaxi or q rate They've all got hot charts and they've all got reasons to move. Now doing some more due diligence isn't going to hurt at all. Not putting these on your watch list, that may. You may be sorry. So come on folks, at least put them on your watch list. But do some due diligence as well. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.